Okay, so good evening. Welcome everyone to your delivering and interpreting financial statements revision session. Tonight we're going to be looking at task seven, which is your interpreting finance, uh, inter sorry, interpretation of ratios, getting ahead of myself. Um, this I think is quite a nice task once you've got to grips with it, because there's almost only so many answers you can give. You just need to you need to learn what affects what ratio. And then it doesn't matter what company it is, or what the scenario is, as long as you know, for instance, increased sales will make gross profit increase. An easy one. But as long as you know that, it's it, it's just one you've got. Okay. Let's have a look. Oh, tap if I was on the right one. So you should all have access to this. If you don't, let me know. Um, this is a first intuition Mark 1. And what I think is really nice about this Mark 1 is the task briefing. The task briefing is really useful for just telling you what you need to know. What you need to know, what knowledge you need to have to be confident to, to answer this task. Okay. So in task six, you're going to be expected to calculate the ratios, whereas in task seven, you're going to be given a set of figures, such as an extract from one of the financial statements, and that could be your balance sheet, your P&L, or your cash flow. And then you're going to need to compare and analyse that information with something such as the previous period, or a competitor, or industry averages. And you're going to need to be able to explain your analysis to an identified party given to you in the scenario. And it's really, really important. The first thing you need to know is who this information is being prepared for. Do they have accounting knowledge? This is important um, because the way you present your findings needs to be in line with the user's ability to understand the information. So if you're sending it to the financial controller, you know that they've got great accounting knowledge and you can use accounting terminology that they will understand. But if you're sending this to the board of directors and um, the budget committee or a supplier, for instance, they might not have that, that detailed knowledge of accounting. And it's important that you know that when you prepare your answer. OK. More often than not in these tasks, it's going to be for somebody who isn't an accountant. So those of you that have done budgeting, for instance, I'm taking it, none of you have probably sat AMAC yet, but you might have done budgeting or decision and control back on AQ 2016. Um, something that you may, I hopefully have heard as you've worked through is to always present your written answers as if you was explaining it to your nan or the equivalent, unless of course your nan is accountant, an accountant, she might be a chartered accountant, then that doesn't work. Um, but explain your answers in a back to basics way so that the reader can understand you. And by doing that, you're, you're showing the examiner, examiner that you really understand the information that you're providing. Some, um, one of the other tutors says, present it as if you are telling a two-year-old who always says, but why, but why? but why sort of thing really that's just a good mindset to have so that you're explaining your answers fully and that will go a long way across level four if you've still got other level four units to go it's a little bit strange obviously we're going to have people who have done some 2016 and some who are just on 2022 so I don't quite know where you're all at so we'll just give an overall view <laughs> so let's have a look who is the information being prepared for Okay, so that's basically what we've just spoken about. And we'll give a for instance, here it talks about a supplier. So a supplier is going to be interested in the cash flow of the business because they want to know if the business is going to be able to pay their invoices in full and on time. That's really what they're interested in. Also, the future of the business, is there going to be future orders? That's of interest to a supplier. What is the decision to be made? So if the business is requesting finance from the bank, th that could very well be your scenario. The bank is going to want to know things such as the gearing of the business, right? 
So how much debt finance does the business already have? If the business goes bust, will the bank get their money? And they're also going to be interested in what assets the business owns, which could be used to secure any finance against or sold to make repayments. And then, of course, the cash position of the business. You will find most people are interested in that. <laughs> and then look at the bigger picture. So this is really important. It's one thing to be able to work through the ratios that are given to you and analyze each of them and make a comparison. But at level four, you really need to be able to just add that, add more value to your answers to pick up the marks that are available. So think about how the ratios are linked to each other. For instance, you know, gross profit has increased, but operating profit has decreased. So we know operating profit includes overheads, right? So overheads must have increased more than gross profit. What could this be? And then think about the overheads. And generally in your extra information, there's going to be a really big sign as to why that's happened. If we think this unit is almost exactly the same as financial statements from the 2016 syllabus. And in those scenarios, it was always quite obvious that the scenarios were always good. You could, you could see something screaming at you like a new competitor or a machine broke or there was a flood in the factory, you know, something that's going to scream out at you. Oh, that could have made this happen. Okay. Being able to, to link those together will add value and pick up more marks. Okay. And lastly, answer the question asked. So this might seem like a really, really silly thing to put. What if we put this? We all know answer the question that's asked. I can't tell you how many marks that I mark where a student has only answered half of the question. I literally did one today. <laughs> and the half that they answer is great. They do a really good job. But they, they've spent so long concentrating on that first half of the question that they completely forget to answer the second half, which could be, you know, they might have to give a recommendation and that recommendation could be worth five marks and they just don't do it. And they would have been more than capable of doing it, but they've just got distracted, got so focused on that first part that they've forgotten. So really be careful to make sure that you answer the question. If it's a recommendation, you need to be clear that it's a recommendation and not necessarily be wishy-washy about it. And it might be an opinion, which is a little different, but just make sure you, you answer the answer the task in full. Otherwise you're just, you're really missing out on marks available that you're quite capable of doing it. And that's just a shame. So the limitations of ratio analysis, really important. They're gonna come up in tonight's task. And there are like 99% chance that it's going to come up in your exam. I would never say 100%, but they're likely to come up in your exam. I'll probably drop that. I say 95% so nobody holds it against me. <laughs> okay. These I don't think are too difficult to learn and um, definitely worth spending some time on. First of all, you've got your historical information. Let's see if I can make a highlight of it. Not the most technological person in the world. So, nope, Sorry. <laughs> historical information, all financial statements we know have been prepared on previous information, right? We can't, we, you know, we have to wait until the period ends to be able to prepare the statements. And then our ratios are calculated using those statements, which means that the ratios are based on previous information, on past information. We don't know. That information could be completely useless. It could be really out of date. And that would make the ratios completely irrelevant. So something worth thinking about. If it's out of date information, it's literally no use for decision making. Comparisons with the companies. So... Hopefully, if you don't know yet, you will become comfortable with soon the fact that ratios are only useful if we can compare them. If I tell you gross profit of my business was 53% this month, I mean, that, what does that tell you? Well, 53% of what? What was your gross profit last year? What, what kind of gross profit do your competitors have? 
Is 53% good? We have no idea. You need to be able to compare your ratios to another company or your industry average or a previous period. Okay. It's also a case of being mindful that if you are comparing them to another company, that they may use a different basis for their accounting policies and their estimates. So you might not be comparing like for like information. Window dressing. So you may have come across this before. If a company wants to make their financial statements look really good at the end of the period, make their ratios look better, they could recover lots of debts at the end of the period, which would make their profits look better. Or they could make sure that stock is delivered after the period ends. Or one or two other things just to try and skew the ratios at the end of the year. Like if they're collecting all their receivables before the end of the year, cash is going to look really good. It's going to look really high. Or what is not quite okay with the window dressing, but they might raise some invoices at the end of the year. And then after the period's closed, write, raise credit notes for those invoices. Worth looking for window dressing, it's a key term. And non-financial information. So whilst ratios are great, if you're comparing them in a good way and you know the information's up to date and that it's accurate, they are still only considering the financial impacts of a business. And if you haven't already come across this, you will when you get to your INAC. It's really important to, to consider other elements such as staff morale, the environment, the community, your corporate social responsibility. These things are key. Um, you'll come across, I'm not even going to start talking about INAC, <laughs> but you'll come across the importance of those and why even though ratios are a great help, they're not the be all and end all. We also have markets and size. So businesses in the same industry may operate in different markets. Then their ratios, you can't compare them. It wouldn't, it just wouldn't be accurate comparison. And as it says here, larger businesses can utilize economies of scale, which a, a smaller business wouldn't be able to. And if you, you know, if you compared um, an industry, a factory, production factory who has but the business has lots of assets, lots of expensive assets, lots of inventory, lots of raw materials against a service business, like a cleaning company, for instance, who just have some cleaning products and mops and buckets, their, their ratios are just going to be completely different. Can't compare them. Does that all make sense so far? Is there anything that makes you like want to scream? Or are you all okay? I really wish that the Zoom chat box had like a typing function, you know, like Facebook Messenger or something so that I'd know if someone was typing back to me because there's like a delay. So I'm like, how long do I wait? <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Perfect. So we're going to look at an example task. You're employed by Will Jacks Limited as a finance assistant. Your manager has a meeting with the directors in a few days and has asked you to assist in the preparation of some figures and analysis. The financial statements have already been prepared for the year ended 30th April 2004, and you also have details of the industry average. At the meeting, your manager is going to be suggesting that the business should increase operations in the coming period by applying for a bank loan and expanding the factory. So before we go into it, can anybody tell me if the business is looking at applying for a bank loan to expand the factory, what kind of ratios do we think would be relevant here? Hearing. Yes, love it. Can anyone tell me? Can anyone tell me a little bit about gearing? What does gearing tell us? Interest curve is a great one too. 
Gearing is a ratio that comes up all the time. It's really popular. So anyone tell me what's good gearing, what's bad gearing? Okay, we'll keep going, but I'll look at the chat box. Okay, so we can see here gross profit margin for Will Jacks is 42%, and the in in industry average is 43%. Sorry, I have a frog in my throat. The operating profit margin is 27% compared to 22%. Okay, so their operating profit margin is looking quite good. Their interest cover is 8.3 times compared to an average of 5.1 times. And their gearing is 43% compared to 62%. So gearing is telling us how highly the business is financed by debt, okay, compared to equity. So if the industry average gearing is 62% and the average, the ratio of gearing for Will Jacks is only 43%. This tells us that Will Jacks has a lot less debt than the average, a lot less debt, a lot less finance through debt. Sorry, I'm saying that completely wrong. Sorry. Okay, so for each of Will Jacks limited ratios, identify whether the ratio is better or worse as compared to the industry average and explain what this comparison may tell you about the company including the impact on any future loan application. So the first thing that I'm going to say is, if you haven't been told this already, do not say if a ratio is higher or lower, okay? People do it. You will not get marks for it. A higher gross profit margin is great, but higher expenses is bad. Just using... Just using the terms higher or lower is not going to explain whether and whether your ratio is good or bad. You need to say if it's better or worse than whoever it is that you're comparing it with. Okay. So gross profit margin, is it better or is it worse? Yeah, it's worse. It's only worse by a little bit though, right? Do we need to be worried about that? If the company is thinking about, the company is applying to the bank for a bank loan, do you think the bank are going to mind that there is, they are 1% behind the industry average? No, probably not. I think it's okay. One second. Okay, so explain what this comparison may tell you about the company, including the impact of any future loan applications. Does anybody have any ideas? Okay, so I'm thinking it's probably not going to have much of an impact on the loan implication, is it? No. Let's have a look. Gross profit margin is unlikely to affect the loan application. Okay, what else can it tell you about the company? 
I'm thinking the company is pretty much on par with the average. They're doing okay. There's nothing screaming out that they're they're doing bad. Nothing amazingly good either, but yeah. Okay. Business is doing well. On par with industry average. If any of you have attended any of our other revision sessions, you'll know that some of the other tutors write on the screen. My handwriting is terrible. I don't write on the screen. <laughs> we use a Word document. Okay. So let's have a look what's next. We've got our operating profit margin. So let's just remember what that is. So the operating profit margin for Will Jacks is 27%. And the industry average is 22%. Is it better or is it worse? Yeah, it's better. It's quite significantly better as well, isn't it? Let's just type this here. Operating margin. If I could spell operating profit margin. So you would answer this in a full sentence. Will Jack's operating profit margin. It's better than the industry average. A higher operating margin means what? What does it mean? If they've got a decent operating, operating profit margin, what does that tell you? Yes, lower overhead costs. So means jacks have good control of their overheads, would you think? Yeah. Anything else? No one good, no. <laughs> You're all very quiet. Okay, okay. Operate in profit. <laughs> oh, sorry, we did that. <clears throat> the buy in bulk and received a discount. That's going to affect their cost of sales. Yeah, so that's not an overhead. That would be in their cost of sales. Okay, let's move on. So next we have interest cover. We mentioned interest cover before. So is the interest cover better or worse? I hate the delay on chat. <laughs> yeah, the interest cover is better. It's actually very good, isn't it? Interest cover, I think, is very good. The interest cover is saying how many times can the business pay their interest? if they stop trading tomorrow. So 8.3 times is quite a lot. That's good. So it's better than the industry average. Uh, 
and is a good sign that the business is doing well. The fact, obviously, that they're making more profit than, it, than the industry average is going to obviously contribute to the fact that the interest covers more because they've got more profit. So you can link together your upright and profit margin and your interest cover. This point, well, uh, upright margin, margin being higher than average will affect just cover. As more profits are available, let's go for the interest. Adding that extra sentence on, linking the two, the two ratios, really important to add value to your answers and we'll pick up more marks. So next we have our gearing. So is our gearing better or is it worse? And can someone tell me a little bit about it? Someone tell me a little bit about gearing, about maybe why the gearing is better or worse. Or what it means. And remember the task. So they want to go to the bank and ask for a loan. We should add on to here as well that higher interest cover make the business more desirable to lenders. Exactly. Yeah, they operate using less debt than the ind industry average. The business is financed more from equity, which is just safer. The reason equity is safer than debt, if you don't know, is if the business goes bust, then the banks and the finance, they will get paid first. So if the business owes money to the bank, if they've had a loan, they owe interest, that will get paid out of whatever cash is left in the business or whatever assets get sold before any shareholders get paid. So being able to, <clears throat> sorry, by having less finance through debt just makes the business look more desirable to a bank because they know they're more likely to get paid. Okay, gearing. So gearing is better. Obviously, you'd write these in full sentences. Gearing is better with only 43% compared to 62% average. This means the business is financed less by debt than average. This makes them less risky, less risky as a lender. And banks are more likely to lend. They're really happy with that. Yeah. What we're doing a task like this as well is look to see how many marks are available. Doesn't tell us in this one, but say this is worth, say this. 
this was worth eight marks, then you know you've got four ratios that you're looking at. You need to write, we need to get two marks per ratio. That means you need to write two clear and complete answers for each ratio. So that's just a good way to kind of judge how much you need to write for each one. Okay. Next, we want to look at the three limitations of ratio analysis. So we read these in the task briefing, didn't we? So can anyone tell me any without cheating, without looking up in your book? Or does anyone have any questions about any of them? Let's think about historical information first. Okay, so we said before, obviously, that financial statements are prepared using historical information. Oh, Laurel, I like that a lot. I like it. We don't know the accuracy of our data from the competitors. Exactly. That's, that's a really good answer. Well done. I like that a lot. That would go in a uh, comparison to other companies. Brilliant. Well done. Let's put this down here. We'll get back up. Comparison to other companies. Pretty sure it just lets me paste this. Brilliant. Okay, we'll go back to the historical information. So financial statements are prepared using historical information. This means it may, this means our ratios be up to date. The statements may have been prepared six months ago. Apparently I can't spell tonight, sorry. May have been prepared six months ago. And there could have been a recession since, for instance. <laughs> it's put a change in the market. Okay. It also could be that the statements have been prepared uh, let's say the wrong time of year or the right time of year, but at just an, a time of year that isn't average. So the statements may have been prepared when the company's just brought a brand new non-current asset, which has cost a lot of money. And that's going to affect their return on capital employed, for instance, or it may have affected if they've got it on a lease or on finance, it might affect their gearing. And if they haven't had chance to actually use this asset yet, you know, they've brought this asset in the hope that that's going to help them make more profit. But if they only brought the asset a month ago, they're probably not seeing any profit from that yet. So that's always worth thinking about. And that's the kind of thing, again, in a scenario, in like your extra information, look out for things like that, where they'll say the company brought this asset a month ago or two months ago. They're not going to tell you that they're not seeing profit from it yet. You're expected to know that. Okay. So the statements may have been produced uh, after recently purchasing. Did I spell? Yeah, after recently purchasing an expensive non-current asset. Which is the business is yet to see. profits from happy Perfect. yeah 
Yep. Okay, I'll keep going because I'm aware it's now 20 to 8. So comparison to other companies. Laura made a great point here and I love this. We don't know the accuracy of the data from the competitors. So whilst our, our ratios could be spot on, they could be brilliant, they could have been. Financial statements were prepared a week ago. The ratios are accurate, everything's on point. But then we compare them to another company whose ratios are completely askew. And then again, it's telling us nothing. We need to be able to compare them. That was a really good answer. I like that. Okay. Also, you might not be comparing like for like. Could be a different market. Or the size of the business. Maybe victim ratios. Also, different policies again. Sorry. Ratios are comparable. I can't spell. <laughs> there we go. Next, we have window dressing. We definitely spoke about window dressing earlier. Can anyone tell me anything about window dressing? This is where I need that little typing button just so I know I never know how long to wait. Okay, I'll keep going. So if a company, oh, <clears throat> yeah, collecting debts before year end. This is going to affect gross profit. not show a true and fair view. Yep. Making purchases after the year end to reduce expenses. Using year-end figures instead of using averages from across the year. And skew the results. Okay, we also have non-financial information. So what kind of non-financial information do you think is important that ratios don't tell us? So ratios don't consider things such as staff morale, the, the environment, or the community. And these things are all really important to know how a business is actually doing. Factors. Consider. Okay. And then we have markets and size. 
So we mentioned this before, but you might have two businesses that they're, they're in the same industry, but they operate in different markets and that would make their ratios completely uncomparable. Okay. So a big unit, a big business could be using economies of sight, economies of scale. Economies of scale. This would affect ratios. Oh. Can anyone think of anything else? Is there anything that anybody would add to these limitations? Or does anyone have any questions? Anyone? Are you all good? Does it seem awful or do you think it seems fairly straightforward? With a little bit of practice? Is anybody there? <laughs> okay, wow. Well. The recording will be sent out tomorrow morning for those of you that would like to view it or those of you that are viewing it not live, then enjoy. And I'm going to stop the recording now.